I think of I think of this recent debate, and because Biden might have been a little bit weary, he might have been a little bit tired. He, he had a bad day. First thing the Democrats did was they run. Oh man, he gave it up. He fell. No, he didn't. He had a bad day. He had an awful night. He had a horrible night. Help me, Holy Ghost. I was not hating to say that he just did not do well as many hoped he would. Let's not get so caught up. Amen. Everybody has an off day. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. And I witnessed speaking in tongues and calling Jesus because I was so worried about President Joe Biden. I was wondering, I said, God, why is this happening? Why, 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 why this happening? We, wait, wait, we just celebrated Juneteenth and then you gonna hit us like this? You gonna, you gonna allow this man to stand up and just lose his train of thought on national TV? Don't let one bad debate call into question the soul of our country. Let us not take a debate performance and cause that to forget a performance of an administration. Paul had some bad days before when he persecuted the Jews, but he changed. After everything Paul did, he kept on. He went on to further do the work of God. Nobody has called for the one that tried to tear up American democracy to drop out. But all of a sudden, you have new Newspaper reporters and newspaper editorial boys saying it's time for Joe Biden to step out. Please do not get caught up in the hype of how he didn't do well, and they, oh, you don't you don't have to debate to be the president. Amen. Now I do want y'all to know that President Biden he stutters. Y'all do know that, right? You couple that with other things, but well, you know he does have a stuttering, but he's still president. Amen. Still a decent man. Amen. In his defense, the very next day he had a rally, and it looked like a different man. He had more energy, he had more pep in his step. He looked alive, was reminded of one of the isms that we don't usually talk about, but it is real, ageism. I have never heard a message on ageism before, but we need to talk about it because it is a threat against the church. And even people who look like you and I, who've been helped by the policies of one Joseph Biden, saying that he's too old now, we need to do something else. My question is, what's that something else? One or the other getting elected. Black work is important. That's you and I getting to the polls. So we say to our enemies the same thing Nehemiah said to his, that the work is too great to give up. I'm not going to tell you who to cast the ballot for. That's not my job as the preacher. But I know who I'm not casting the ballot for. You remember Hank Aaron? Hank Aaron was known as the home run king. But guess what? Most folk don't know that Hank Aaron struck out over 1,300 times. We lift up Hank Aaron because of the 755 home runs that he hit, but we don't talk about the 1,300 times he struck out. Biden struck out, but let's not talk about him striking out. Let's talk about all the home runs that he hit for black America and for keeping America safe. Well, I can't tell you who to vote for. Help me, Holy Ghost. All I can tell you is just remember all the good things that have happened in America under this president and all the negative things that happened in America under the last president. Let's remember, help me, Holy Ghost, to hold on to what you have. Can I get a witness up in here? Yeah, he might be old. He might have struggled to get them words out. That ain't no different than some of y'all get up here on Sunday morning at a microphone that you ain't used to and we don't talk bad about you. We go ahead and clap for you. Because the fact of the matter is, I'm looking around this audience, none of us are as sharp as we used to be. I'm wearing by Focals. I said, none of us are as sharp as we used to be. If you just think about the goodness of the Lord, you'll forget about Trump. A lot of us are upset because Biden didn't do very well in the debate the other day, but that's all right. I'd rather have a stuttering Biden than a lying Trump. I wish I had a help up in here. Now you tell me what you rather have. Bold lies or whispered truth. I'll take Joe over a habitual liar any day. I'll take Joe over a convicted Felon in a day. I will take Joe Biden in a wheelchair and on oxygen before I take the other candidate on steroids running a hundred mile race. It could be an ant running against Donald Trump and the ant would have my vote. Now we have seen Trump's influence over the Supreme Court now that leans very conservative. They've overturned Roe vs. Wade, and whether you agree with the morality of abortion or not, we have to say that at least it ought to be the woman's choice to decide what to do for her. And let us not fall into the trap and the narrative that keeps us out of the voting poll and would allow a dictator to walk back into office.
the Herodian church, Jesus taught and said, beware of the leaven of what? Herod. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, and then beware of the leaven of Herod. Not just Herod, the king. There were many king Herods, but also his position, his political position. Beware of the politician. The leaven, the intent, and the influence of the politician. Politicians will make people act like donkeys. Won't they? Won't they? Especially us. I don't know black people. I, I don't know what happens to us. We lose all sense of morality when it comes time to vote. It all becomes about color, skin color. The most shallow, the most shallow idea on the face of the planet is skin color. To judge someone by skin. That is as shallow as you can be as a human being because under your skin, everything else is the same. And you're judging something that was affected by UV rays and not genetics. You don't have no black DNA. You wasn't in the womb with a soul power fence. You balled up. <laughs> Just in the womb, soul power. <laughs> no black DNA. That's, that's just stupid. No, that's shallow for you to look on a face and then they don't even give you nobody black. They give you might be black. <laughs> Somewhat black. And then you know how inconsistent it is for a black black person to say that that's black. That don't make any sense. Well, then what makes you black? That's black without the black culture? So it's just shades and tints? Amen. Woodrow Wilson had a tan. <laughs> that just don't make no sense. But man, when it comes to politics, boy, if you want to divide a country, thank God for my lovely mother who's here. She's been through a lot this week, been visiting and talking to folks. And, you know, folks, you know, amen. So we praying her strength because a lot of family stuff going on. But all right, but back to this what <laughs> what is wrong with us why do we look at people that way I promise you I walk around this church and the whites the Hispanics all that I make jokes because that's what I do that's how y'all know I love y'all I have to you know show you some form of racism <laughs> just to know that, that that's my love language <laughs> but that's every color that's whoever you are yep whatever but I don't look at people as, you know, I'm, I'm not seeing you as or ranking you in your skin tone or skin color. And I'm definitely not holding any of you accountable for what happened to my ancestors. One, because I don't know my ancestors. I don't know them. And I don't know your ancestors. And your ancestors didn't do that to, my to, to me. And I really don't know what happened. All I know is what the history books told me. And the longer we go, I, the, the more I'm finding out that they hid a whole lot of history from us. So I can't even trust that. And I'm definitely not basing my sermons and my prayers and, and what I'm talking about on what TV is saying. I can't take social media seriously. I'm not going to get up and preach. Oh, no. He said it. I said, boy, they can deep fake anything now. I don't know what's going on out there. I got to put my faith and trust in God because that's the only thing constant. God never changes. So this is Herod's system. Let's, let's talk about, this is what made, what Jesus was talking about, the leaven of Herod. First of all, the people, Herod had the power of a God. He was supreme ruler. 
Herodians, those that followed him, believed they were serving God by serving him. Okay? A little twisted. Herodians were subject to the good old boy system. So the bloodline, successions, nepotism, etc., kept the king's lineage of Herod's in power. So he would make sure that his successor was a part of his bloodline so that the name Herod or the Herod system could continue through the whole good old boy system. So basically some people could not ever become a Herod um, and so they sat back and just watched these guys rule. To get the favor of the supreme ruler, you had to bribe or satisfy them in service or deed. Amen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Herod mixed the pagan government with the church and controlled both. So he mixed the pagan government and then he mixed his spirituality and religion in with it and he controlled both of them. So he controlled the churches and he controlled the, the, the world. He was that kind of politician. And then Herod desired to kill Jesus because his teachings were influencing his Herodians. So this is why he instituted the rule, tried to kill all of the boys. He was trying to kill Jesus. And then, you know, he found out where Jesus was and asked the wise men. He went to the astrologers, so he, astro, astrologers try to figure out where Jesus was so he could kill him because Jesus, they had been talking about uh, before his birth and then he knew that he would lose influence once Jesus came. People would begin to listen to Jesus instead of following the political system. Y'all still with me? Our American government mirrors the monarchy of England. We are ruled by godless people that masquerade as Christians. Which ones you talking about? All of them. All of them. You know, the local state level, the, the count, I mean, even lower than that, county level and all of that, when you vote in different things, I believe that you have an effect on that. But once it get up to the, the, the where the Masons rule, I'm sorry. They aren't thinking about you. They're thinking about the God of Masonry. And that just happens to be Lucifer. Yes. We are ruled by godless people that masquerade as Christians because they appear to use scripture and claim to be religious. Ain't it funny how the, the, the evilest people are always saying they're Christian or believers. That's what the Pharisees were. The Pharisees were the religious order. And they were possessed by python spirits, snakes, and vipers. 2 Timothy 3 and 5, they had a form of godliness but denied the power thereof. God says if you're denying the power, turn away from those that are denying the power. Right. Amen. If people are denying the power, we should turn away from them. The leaven of the Pharisees was this way as well. They used the letter of the law to justify and solidify their public actions but had a dark agenda privately. So the Pharisees would be confronting people with the law. Oh, you committed adultery. We got to stone you. Oh, you did this. You did that. We got to do this. You, you are disobeying the law. You, you know, you didn't uh, 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 honor the Sabbath. So we got to kill you. They taking the law. But then when it's dark at night, they are having secret meetings with government officials and those that are in power in dark chambers, pledging to dark orders and following instructions of the devil. This was the agenda of man, a Freemason ideology based on the Kabul order and dark writings of King Solomon. I don't have time to go into this era, man. I will cover King Solomon because he was a wise, the wisest man that ever lived. He knew, he knew pretty much everything you can know as a human. God said that he knew more than anybody and he knew more than anybody would ever know. Right? God, that's God-given wisdom. But when God grants you that level of wisdom, 
Not only do you know all the light stuff, but you know the dark stuff too. I'm a, uh, amen. I'm going to stop right there. Matthew 23 and 27. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto white sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead man's bones and of all uncleanness. Amen. So Jesus knew the scribes and the Pharisees. He knew who they were meeting with at night. He knew why they wanted to kill him. They were being told to kill him by the government and those that led that truly had authority over the people. That was their living. Amen. Amen. In order to be granted control or political power in these systems, you had to be a successor of a previous ruler because the bloodline of a ruling family had to continue. That's the way it is in America. That's why you can't have a soul brother black in the office. He don't have that monarch blood. That's why it always got to be semi-black. Could have been black. Might be black. We don't know. And you have to settle for that because that blood has to be traced back to the royal family. Amen. You know, I've been talking about this stuff. I was talking about this stuff before folks was talking about this stuff. Amen. So I'm very comfortable with it. The founding fathers of America masqueraded as believers, but they were all a part of the higher order of man. Wasn't none of them saved. None of them. But they weren't believers. They were Freemasons that planned to one day rule the world. They are all quoted. Now I got quotes from all of them as denying the deity of Jesus Christ, just as the Kabul Jews and Pharisees did. I'm just going to give you one quote from Thomas Jefferson. He said, rogueries, absurdities, and untruths were perpetrated upon the teachings of Jesus by a large band of dupes and importers led by Paul, the first great corrupter of the teaching of Jesus. Thomas Jefferson. Some of y'all grew up, y'all know Thomas Jefferson. I ain't talking about him, dude on your street. <laughs> I'm talking about the founding father, Thomas Jefferson. Amen. They all got quotes like that. Were they talking against Jesus? Ben Franklin was the worst. Amen. Oh, you're talking about the man that discovered electricity. He didn't discover electricity. Amen. Somebody black discovered everything back then. And I mean, I think Ben Franklin touched the key after the black dude. Was the black dude flying the kite? It's a brother flying the kite. <laughs> Amen. Y'all don't know how slavery works. I'm, and this isn't a shot at, 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 at Caucasian. That's how slavery works. You get the slave to do all the work. And if he does the work under your rule, you take credit for it. That's what slavery is. So all these inventions and all of this, and hey, they're credited with it, but it happened under their administration. They didn't do it. Amen. I know you saw it on Conjunction Junction. What's your function? But that don't make it true. You saw the schoolhouse rock, and you just said, now, wait a minute. I saw this episode. No, that's what I said. If they could change the history, I ain't believing nothing they say. I'm believing what the Bible say. Now, trust me. Who discovered electricity in the Bible? <laughs> I mean, I just, you just, it's hard to believe it now. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so... They decided all of these leaders, the Kabul Jews, the Jesuits, all of these folks that want to control the world, they said, the way we, since we're watching Jesus and we're watching uh, Ju uh, Judaism and we saw how God ruled over his group of people and kept his people intact, 
so that they could have their own world within a world and control their people, their mindsets and different things. We want to create that too. God did it through religion, so we're going to create it through religion as well. And that's where Catholicism comes in. Now, Catholicism has a billion converts, so it ain't going nowhere. As a matter of fact, it's growing. Amen. And Catholicism is the end time, one world religion. It just is. Pope, Antichrist, Pope is a continuation of the Caesar's rule of Rome. All of that. It's all just biblical. I've been talking about it for many years. So if you want to know what's happening in the end time, watch Catholics. They have an infrastructure that is the most powerful order, religious order in the whole world. They got the most money, the most members, and they have the ultimate power and control of the banking systems. Now, when you got the money, amen, they're, they're in control of every aspect. They're in control of technology. They're in control of the space program. They got the largest telescope in Arizona. I know I'm preaching. And you know, amen, they, they, you know. And so they got a hierarchy. And they fix their hierarchy so nobody can really get the truth. Catholic priests discourage people from reading the Bible. Don't read it for yourself. You won't understand it. You need us. And then the priests need the bishops. And then the bishop needs the archbishops. Then the archbishops need the cardinals. And the cardinals have to submit to the Pope. Because he's the only one that can go to God. He's the mediator. He's the vicar of Christ. Yeah, got a whole video about it called Mother of All Gods. True Pine Hip Hop Part 7. Amen. Breaks down the whole hierarchy, but this hierarchy right here is dangerous, man. God never intended for his church to operate this way. This is Antichrist church. Amen. Catholicism, Catholics are Antichrist. They do the opposite of what Christ said do. When you fast and don't appear to fast, they draw, they put an ass on their head so they can appear to fast. They just do the opposite of what the Bible says. The opposite of Christ is Antichrist, opposing Christ, in opposition to Christ. Can I keep preaching in here? We have been indoctrinated by lies. We have been told that when we vote in America, we are voting God's sovereign leader into a Christian nation. God has never tried to lead America through its president. I'm preaching now. Oh, I'm preaching heavy now. Why would God use the president when the president has no power? Why would God, why would God tell the president anything when the president has no power? You don't know that the president has no power? I'm not going to tell him to do something so he can go ask the, 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 the other uh, uh, parts of the government, the other branches, so they can vote. Ooh, I wish somebody, see, folks, just, man, we just, I mean, if you sit up and watch social media, man, your heart will be beating fast. You'll be watching it thinking, oh, man, if Kamala get it, Oh, if Trump get it. Oh, if. Same bird. Left wing, right wing. I ain't never seen a bird flying only to the right. Bird got two wings. I 
ain't never seen a bird fly with one wing. Is that possible? Yeah, so we think we're voting in a sovereign leader that can do whatever he wants into a Christian nation. But look around you. If you open your eyes, you will see that our country is not serving the true God of the Bible. It wasn't built to. Things are getting so bad. Things were built to get bad. It was never supposed to get good. When this country was founded, it was founded by men that wanted it to get bad. They weren't concerned about the people. They were concerned about their power. When they were building the Tower of Babel, you think they were building that because they was concerned about the people? Yeah, this is going to give the people somewhere to live and, oh, they'll have room all the way up to the heavens. It'll be bigger than Cabrini Green. <laughs> Just building a tower. No, that's not why they was building The Bible says why they was building it. Nimrod was building it so he could make a name for himself. And man could make a name for themselves. And that's why America was created. So some men can make a name for themselves. Oh, pastor, this is just... Oh, it is what it is. Amen. And after service, I'm going to watch the game. And depending on how that is, I'm going to be happy. And then I'm going to go eat. I'm going to be with my wife, my kids, and I'm going to enjoy myself in this wretched kingdom. Look at this fly. See? That might, that's a drone. Get out of here. Trying to spy on me. It's a YouTube drone. If you open your eyes, you'll see. Look at somebody and say, open your eyes. Open your eyes. Go visit the, the, the Capitol building. Open your eyes. Look up at the rotunda. Do you see Jesus? Look at the monuments. Are they shaped like the cross? Yeah, look at your money. In God we trust is on it though. Yeah, but it what God? Freemasons have a God. They call him the great architect of the universe. Fraternities and sororities have gods. Zeus, Apollo, Athena. Yeah. So what God are you trusting in? Matthew 7 and 16, ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? How are you trying to get grapes and the thorns? You're going to know them by their fruit. I know I'm preaching. Many of our church denominations are structured the same way as our pagan government. Uh, let me say that again. Many of our church denominations structured the same way as our pagan government. Men can be given churches or become bishops because of the good old boy system. Same thing. This keeps the power of God out of the picture and men must rely on their own influence or campaign power to get elected. Now, since where in the Bible did the people pick who God was going to speak through? I mean, how can we know and have that kind of knowledge about people. It has to be God. First John 4 and 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are what? Of God in the same passage because. Look at somebody say because. Now let me go back because that, that because is, he, he's saying something. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God because many false prophets are going out into the world. So you got to try the spirit because there's many false prophets. Amen. Amen. Folks speaking for God, saying what God, they think God told them. So you can't believe every spirit.
Look at somebody and say, don't believe every spirit. This practice births churches led by men, selected by men. Instead of selected by men, selected by God. When this happens, the people are subject to insecure leadership and have truths to justify the method. What I mean by insecure leadership? Well, when churches are led by people selected by the people, you lead insecure. See, you're not secure because it's relative to the people. You can't have security if the people are your barometer. Because if the people change, if their minds change and feelings change, then your administration is gone. Your, lead, your rule is gone if you were chosen by the people. So when you're chosen by the people, you're always insecure. That's what politicians are. They always insecure. That's why you can't get them to say nothing. They had that bogus debate. Man, if y'all believe that was a real debate, I, that whole thing was staged. Like, I'm like, Trump, no, you got this. Why you not saying this? Why you didn't say this? Why did you do this? What are y'all doing? It's staged. It was, they were acting. You couldn't see that? It was foolishness. Oh, yeah, folk don't want to clap at that. They're like, uh-oh. Yeah. No, it's acting. You think they're going to let them get on there and say whatever they want to say? And you can't even do that on social media now. Right. Everything is censored. Like, you can't do it on social media. So why would they let them do it on live TV? So you really believe they wouldn't take it in the back room and say, okay, now you can't say this. Now, don't address her with, no, 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 you, you can't go here or there. Somebody, no, I saw it. I seen it. It was real. They was really mad. They was really mad. Then they was together, like, right, right after that. And he walked up to her, hey, good debate. Shook her hand, good debate. And then Biden, they done handed him a hat, and he just put in a <laughs> I'm going to show y'all who to vote for. And he put on a Trump hat. I said, now this is just, yes, he did. And wore it. No, it ain't just him, man. They are just playing us. They are playing us, man. They, they don't, they just want, they believe that you're stupid. Look at somebody and say, I'm not in a stupor. I'm wide awake. Look at somebody and say, I'm wide awake, but I'm not woke. You can be wide awake without being woke. I'm preaching in this place today. Amen. I feel it. This produces members that are indoctrinated by the church to go after the world. So when they see that they can vote you in and you're a part of, you're there because of them, then they perceive that the world works that way. And I don't have to be validated by God's plan for me. I got to please people to get what I want. When men are validated by the church hierarchy, but don't possess a true gift from God, they are examples of how to make it without God. You put that dude in that church, he know four scriptures. And he preaching them every Sunday. Yeah, they don't have no spiritual gifts. But you see them, they got all the decoration. I saw this one dude, I, I sat with him at a table, I, you know, well. And I said, man, you the grand poobah of the church, bruh. It's like you got every sash, every... <laughs> you just, I mean, got the robe, you got a robe on the robe. Got a sash over that. Got the thing that go around here. Got the tassel that come right here. Tassels on your shoes. You got, I mean, your briefcase got stuff sticking out of it. I was like, brother, you just well decorated with five members. (laughs) 
Well, it ain't about as many, how, how many people you have. It sure isn't. But if you look like that, you better have more than five. <laughs> it ain't about how many people you have. It's about how many tassels, tassels hanging from you, bruh. You make noise when you walk. Just stop just moving and just, just all kind of hitting people in the aisle and tassels and just people's eyes itching. Your tassel are just. Why are you decorated like that? Come in with a staff. <laughs> Bro, where you going? Where you going with that? Ain't no sheep in here. <laughs> where you going? Now they upload it online and something. They just make the church look foolish. When men are validated by the church hierarchy, they don't possess, and, uh, but don't possess a true gift. There are examples of how to make it without God. This leads to people seeking the approval of men. This leads to people seeking the approval of men and chasing dreams rather than following the plan of God. Because they see you making it without God. Now we all have to make it without God. We know you don't have spiritual gifts. You ain't supposed to be pastoring or leading anybody without spiritual gifts. That's the whole point. Don't start a church to get a Cadillac. Job 34 and 30. That the hypocrite reign not lest the people be what? That's what happens to the people when you got the idiot leading. People are ensnared. When men lead churches like these, their true identity is hidden by their positions, power, and platforms. We don't know who you are. Because you got all that stuff on. And why are you wearing all that? That's Catholicism. They're going to decorate the outside. Take all that off. All them layers of robes and tassels, whatever, and under it is a skeleton. Dead men's bones somebody evil only doing it for the approval of men when men lead churches like these their true identity is hidden but in secret they are a part of secret societies and dark orders I was talking to this one pastor one time we was at Denny's restaurant I'll never forget and I was sitting down he came up to me hey doc how you doing man I said, yeah, man, how you doing? I know uh, uh, you started your church and all that. You know, how's your church going? Oh, man, you know, we going, we, 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 we going, we, 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 how's your church doing, bro? I, I mean, it's going to get there. It's going to get there. And then I looked at his ring. I said, dude, you a mason? He put his hand in his pocket. Oh, you know, dude, you got a ring on. Why are you putting your hand in your pocket now? You was uh, <laughs> Fred Sanford a minute ago. Now you're trying to hide it from me. Man, why you got a Freemason ring on? You start the church and you're a Freemason? Do you know you worship? Do your members know you worship Satan? Do your members know you worship the devil? Do they know you pledge to the devil? Thank God they didn't have social media back then. That would have went viral in the Denny's. Because I'm going to ask you. Because you know black folks, you know sometimes we just ignorant, Deshaun. It's supposed to be a secret society, but we got a bumper sticker on the car. And a jacket and a hat. Why you got a hat with a protractor on it? You walking around with a baseball cap. And a jacket. It's a secret. It's a secret. We don't even know how to keep a secret. You got a Freemason. 
upside down five point pentagram on your car. Eastern star two. Amen. Don't you know? No, I'm not letting you slip through either. If you had an Eastern star, you're a witch. Because that's an order. That's a dark order. Trying to be a female version of the Freemasons. All y'all under the five point pentagram of Lucifer. All preaching in here. Amen. And you know it. So they master spiritual workings that cannot be seen to feel better about their inconsistencies that can be seen. Acts 20 and 29. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in where? Not sparing the flock. People are elevated and promoted as favors rather than God's gifted. So the people seek to please the leader in every way possible in order to be promoted. So that's what they were doing. They were seeking to please Herod so they could be promoted. I, woo. Proverbs 29, 26, many seek the ruler's favor, but every man's judgment cometh from the Lord. Can I keep preaching? Herod pretended to be a Christian and even pretended to honor Christ as Lord at his birth even though he was secretly wanting to kill him. Now, if they ask K Kamala if she's a Christian, guess what she gonna say? Yeah, of course. Why? Because that's the largest demographic of voters in America. They ask Biden. Of course. I'll go to church. Matthew 2 and 7, Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently, what time did the star appear? So he was trying to get the wise men to lead him to Christ so that he could kill him. And they had a dream about it. So they said, you know what? We ain't, we, we, we ain't fooling with Herod. He did not like the influence that Christ had on the masses and was threatened by it. The political leaders of today all have some form of biblical belief, but they all desire to kill the influence of Christ as well. <laughs> yeah. After all, the glory of righteous living and God's power belongs to God. If any man desires to receive glory, he must take it from Christ. Amen. Isaiah 42 and 8. Ooh, this is scary. I am the Lord, and that is my name. And my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. You can't get the Lord's glory. But these politicians, they can make the pastor shut up. Okay, then when you come on my platform, you can't talk against abortion because now we call that women's rights. Can I preach in here? Summary! The leaven of Herod has crept into many American churches just as Jesus warned. Now they have a form of godliness but do not stand for the truth of Christ. The influence of the world system is active in the church and the inconsistencies are innumerable. The president can be for abortion, same sex, marriage and other things that God hates but if he says he's a Christian, guess what? He's okay. It's false God worship. It's abortion, killing, that's Molech. And that's what's happening. You know, things are happening now that hadn't happened before because we opened up the, the, the country to all of this witchcraft. During the Antifa and the BLM, remember that? And remember your pastor told you they were doing rituals in the streets? Remember that? Remember, remember that? Remember I told y'all they're doing rituals in the street because they were opening it up to the witchcraft. Now they eating animals and everything. 
sacrificing them, burning them, all of that, doing stuff they used to do in their native land. They can do it in America now because the rituals were performed to open us up to it. That's what abortion was. Yeah, that's why all these girls getting these little septum piercings. They call that the bull piercing. Not only know one bull that they worshiped in the Bible. And that was Molech. Why is that popular now? Hey Amen. Take it out when you come to our church. I don't want to see it. Tell them, Jay. Amen. Look, somebody. Well, that's my cultural expression. Well, go to your culture and express it. Amen. The Herodians believe Herod to be in good standing with God just because he said he was. Now our church believes that our political system is led by God because they say so. Y'all believe God is leading our political system? Mm -mm. You better just let God lead you. Amen. You got to make it personal. Just lead me and my family, Lord. And we will be all right. Whatever happened to our fruit being the deciding factor. Why are we not examining the fruit of these people to see if what they are doing is lining up with what the word says. When people are indoctrinated in church to seek the approval of men and to please men in order to excel in church. Then they were taught to worship and serve the creation rather than the creator. Yeah, we don't do that here. We ain't playing favorites and because you can to me, you get to do this and that and this. We don't do that. We don't do that, do we, Elder? We don't, we, we don't, we don't exist. We don't operate like that. Amen. So many of our churches have served as indoctrination camps to get people to serve the agenda of man for the sake of God. That was the exact agenda of Herod. And this is where many of our churches are today, all subject to the leaven of Herod. Titus 1 and 16, they profess to know God, to recognize, perceive, and be acquainted with him, but deny the, and disown and renounce him by what they do. How you profess to know God and stand for abortion? How do you profess to know God stand for same-sex marriage how do you profess to know God and stand with witches and warlocks all you gotta do is look around you who's on your wait a minute everybody around me is crazy why am I on this side They are detestable and loathsome, unbelieving and disobedient, and disloyal and rebellious. And they are unfit and worthless for good works of any kind. These are the people that profess to know God, but don't really know him. They are unfit and worthless for good work. That's the Bible. And good work of any kind. So we can't lift these people up like they are being used by God or God's chosen or whatever. We can't. No, 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 no. You can't lift people up. You lift Jesus up. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Everyone stand to your feet. Now, we're not going to be a Herodian church around here. Amen. Amen. We don't operate like that anyway. But I know many of you, it's in your families, it's in your, might be in your spirit because you've just been arguing and talking to folks and trying to deal with this political thing. And I just want to pray for you today. 
I want to pray your strength through this time so that you won't be influenced and you'll be able to stand um, during this time. So just come up, whoever you are. And you know you got to deal with this. Some of you on your jobs, you got to deal with this in your, in your, in your uh, extended family and relatives and different ones that force you to take a political stand, political side. And we're just going to pray that you be strong in this area during this time. Amen. I know it's tough. I know. I know it's tough. Talk about something else. Mama, them yams was good. Can you make the yams? <laughs> Can we have the yams this time? Yes. Less conversation and more yams. You know, you got to just sometimes change the conversation, man, because people will, they're just, you know, Amen. Amen. But thank y'all. Y'all come on around. Come on around. We got room over here. Y'all come on. Come on this way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, put something else on the screen. Oh, I'm sick of looking at him. Hey. Amen. Is that everyone? All right. If everyone just bow your heads and Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We love you. We thank you, God, for your power. We thank you, Lord, for who you are. We thank you, God, for being our God in this hour. In spite of what is going on in our world, in spite of how bad things are looking and getting, and Father God, how far away from you people are. Father God, we hold you close, believing that you are still the God of everything. You're the God that stepped out of nothing and created something. You're the God that stepped out of nothing and created us. You are the true and living God, and we believe that. We don't come to church for a formality. We don't come to church to meet a quota. We come to church to meet you because we believe you are here. We believe this is the place that you've sanctioned for us to get your word, get an understanding, to grow, for our families to grow, for our children to be blessed. This is the place, Father God. So we thank you for that. And we come here for you. And so we ask you right now, Father God, even with this message, in our families, God, the strife, the bitterness, just the arguments from the past and different things from the our immediate family, our in-laws, whoever it is, our bosses on our job, whoever is trying to cause conflict because of what they're believing that they're seeing on TV and on social media. Father God, we just want the ability to stand right now. Give us the strength and the courage to stand no matter what. Help us to divert our um, arguments, Father God, and to uh, change the subject and just give us an anointing to be able to talk about something else so that we don't have to get our emotions involved in a facade. God, they're playing these people. We don't want to be a part of it. But we want to just put our faith, our trust, and our confidence in you to lead us for our own family's sake. And Father God, we believe that. And God, right now we come asking for your gift of healing for those that need it. Father God, those that need it, those that are sick in their bodies, those that have ailments, Father God, we believe that you can do it. We've seen you do it. We've seen you do it. And whatever method you want to use, Father God, we welcome it because we believe in your healing power. In the name of Jesus we believe so we ask that your healing virtue flow through this congregation Father God fix everything that's out of place fix everything that needs correction fix us Father God and make us whole in the name of Jesus no matter what it is God we trust and believe in you and God when you heal us we're going to tell everybody we can about it. God, we will sing your praise. We will testify of your goodness, your grace. We will testify of your power. We will let the world know that you still can make us whole. We believe it in Jesus' name. 
we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. On your way to your seat, hug somebody and say, I just received everything that was prayed. I receive it all. The healing part, the politics part, every, every part of it, I receive it. Hallelujah. We're going to hear testimonies in here. Testimonies of the goodness of God. And that God still works miracles among his people. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.